In this episode of At the Vets, Cookie the Chihuahua is having breathing difficulties. He can really collapse. In fact, I want the owners to be prepared in this situation already. Moscato and Riesling need to take their mandatory vaccines, but a stomach infection has led to delays. Vaccinations prevent diseases that puppies spread to each other. And the cost of Tok Tok's ear surgery could be too much for his caregivers to bear. This is estimated 1,005 for this one. Which is a significant amount for anyone to pay for a community cat. Cost me another 70 cent drip. For three months, On the Red Dot follows three vets as they care for our animals. She's such a happy girl. Hey guys. Hi dog. What's the appointment like today? Okay, can. Thanks guys. Thank you. Dr. Jean, yeah. you got a letter from Kitty's family. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, Kitty. Our heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Jean for a shout out to the whole healthcare team at Sourcet. Heart shake. She can still enjoy her belly rubs because Aww. of you. Exo, Exo, Kitty's family. She's a little old lady, 12 year old domestic short hair. We discovered she had high blood pressure and the condition that con causes constant low potassium. So we treated her for that. This is where we hang our happy notes. So I'll put Kitty up here. I can't really pick out favourites because I, I like them all. I guess some interesting ones is the owners uh, made a card that's like exactly my, my, my scraps. So it's quite cute. When things get hectic, when I look at the cards, it really does give me a little bit of uh, encouragement to keep going. STARS Veterinary Clinic is one of few vets that can handle emergency critical cases. Not only do they operate longer hours, staff here also monitor patients round the clock. Our emergency caseload can vary from day to day. On some days, we're seeing emergencies back to back and staying very late. 15.6. Yeah, how many days temperature? 8.3. 8.3, yeah. Cookie the Beagle has ingested something deadly. Any ulcerations? No blood yet. Cookie is two years and two months. We left her alone at home on the balcony this morning. When I came back, I saw her at the balcony with a shoot battery. After that, I took her out to a walk. Then she started vomiting. Yeah, so I got really worried and then I quickly bring her in. A bit warm though. Okay, darling. Let me just quickly get a reading. I'll talk to the owner quickly first. Huh? Yeah. Hi, can I just ask a few questions? Like, yeah. What battery is it? It's a typical triple, a, yeah. triple A type battery. So it's not a lithium battery, it's a typical alkaline battery. Yeah. Like. You saw the actual chewing or the fact that it was just bitten off? It was chewed off. So basically... This black colour thing. Ah, okay. So basically the liquid came out already. Like. How many vomits did she have? Two, two times. Did it contain the black stuff inside? A little bit. Yeah. And no metal bits that you saw, is it? I didn't go and see that. Yeah. For alkaline batteries, we are worried about a couple of things. Number one, the inside substances, if it's leaking out, it can cause uh, kind of burns or chemical erosions on the food tube or the stomach. So the worst case scenario for cookie is if the burns have eroded enough into the stomach that it becomes a penetrating ulcer. The second thing is that if we actually swallow the metal bits, it can pose as an obstruction risk to obstruct the intestines. Can ah? Can. In x-rays wise, metal appears as the brightest. The stomach is over here, but I don't see any bright white colour flecks that indicate metal. Fortunately, there are no metal bits found in Cookie's stomach. But Cookie isn't in the clear. She could have ingested battery fluids, which x-rays cannot detect. Okay, um, I'll go through you briefly. The more worrisome part is about the contents of the battery irritating the stomach lining. Okay, I'm going to switch off the lights, so I'll show you the x-rays. It can cause ulcerations, and the worst case scenario, the ulcer is deep enough that it essentially becomes a hole in the stomach. Cookie hasn't shown any signs of ulcerations for now, but that doesn't mean it won't develop in the next 24 hours. 
So recommendation is hospitalization at least one day to tomorrow. If we are stable tomorrow, I do try to send home as soon as possible for this case. Lah. Okay. Can. So I guess the right ear, unfortunately, the opening totally closed already and sealed up already. Community Cat Doc Doc is seeing Dr. Chow for a severe case of ear infection. My name is Fazli and here's my wife here, Nozila. We stay around the area where Doc Doc lives, okay, because he's a community cat. He's been around with us for three years. Three years. One of the most common causes of ear infection is actually uh, ear mites infestation. So it's a type of parasite that hides inside the cat's ears. Ear infection is common among stray cats because one, nobody is cleaning their ears to maintain ear hygiene. And two, ear mites will spread from cat to cat through close contact. It can be painful and sometimes the ear infection can spread internally into the middle ear and cause other symptoms like uh, head tilt. Severe ear infection can lead to hearing loss. Because the ear infection is so serious, the ear canal has narrowed. So there's no way for ear medication to be applied into the ear and therefore surgery is the only option. So it's removing the, the ear canal itself, then getting rid of the infection. Uh. But the surgery isn't going to be cheap. Doc Doc is one of the many stray cats that uh, we have looked up for from the time we have been together. This is estimated 2005, 2005 for this one, inclusive of uh, taking care and hospitalization fee. Which is a significant amount for anyone to pay for a community cat. But if we don't do the surgery, the ear infection will never clear fully and it can spread deeper into other organs. After careful consideration, Tok Tok's caregivers have decided to go ahead with surgery to clear up his ear infection. This will involve removing Tok Tok's infected ear canal. So today's surgery is a bit more complicated because it is close to this important facial nerve and these two important blood vessels. And just behind this black shadow here is the important organ where the body uses to balance. So if we cause any accidental trauma, we can affect the cat's ability to balance. Pass me another 70 cent drip. So this thing here is not optimistic, so I'm blocking a lot of things. I don't know why we need to do this surgery anyway. Yeah. So because the ear canal is narrow, so everything is like clumped together. Mm, challenging. So the ear canal is 50% out already. We will attempt to remove the ear canal totally. Let me apply tension here. So there's some important blood vessel here, so we need to do it very, very slowly. Very, very, very slowly. If Dr. Chow is off by just a few millimetres and severs the blood vessels, it could lead to uncontrollable bleeding, which could be life-threatening. So now we are at the final step of cutting out the ear canal. You put a bit more tension. Ah, okay, so it's done. So the ear canal is here. After this, the infection very, very lightly will clear up ready. So next step is just waiting for the cat to heal from the surgery, which will be around two weeks' time. So when there is no ear canal, what happens is sometimes the sound can be muffled. Talk Talk surgery took about two hours. So for today, we have 
quite a complex surgery and we have a long list of appointments lined up. So today is also quite a packed day. I work six days a week starting at 9.30 a.m. and I end around 7 p.m. But commonly, I also need to work overtime and sometimes I need to come in on my off days. Hello, hi, uh, this is Connie from Alice Vet. Yeah, here. Uh... There's so many patients we need to see, so many patients trying to squeeze in per day, then it does in into our personal time. The worst thing is sometimes we try to squeeze in and people get upset, like why did they need to wait so long? So sometimes we forget that actually vets are humans too, with our own struggles. Hello? Hello, Ma. My dad is a Parkinson's patient, so he has some difficulty moving. And then uh, he fell down uh, two days ago, and then he knocked his, his head, so then he, uh, he's in hospital. Yeah. Okay, okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Since he was uh, hospitalized, I still haven't had the time to go and visit him. Mm. Mobile vet Dr. Forrest is on her way to make a house call. Good morning. Oh, well, good morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good to see you. We have the advantage as house call vets to step into the homes and to see the animal in its holistic environment. For example, for puppies, they are looking for things to chew on and bite. So I go around our house and go like, there's an exposed wire here. I think we should conceal it. So we're not only treating the animal clinically, but also looking at the overall picture, the overall setup. We bought the dogs from uh, UK. When we brought the dogs back, they were very erratic in their behaviour and they had a uh, really runny stool to the extent uh, there was some puking. Hello, Riesling. So I just gave uh, Dr. Forrest a ring and she discovered that they had Jadia. Two weeks ago, Dr. Forrest diagnosed puppies Moscato and Riesling with Giardia. Giardia is a single cell parasite that lives in a dog's small intestine. Giardia can be present in the soil, on dirty uh, drain areas, on the pavements that are wet. These puppies came from a farm where there was lots of soil, lots of grass, and they picked up Giardia from there. Giardia causes a diarrhea in puppies, and it can be a bloody diarrhea as well. Giardia can be dangerous for puppies if untreated. They can lose a lot of fluids, get very dehydrated and collapse as a result. Especially when puppies don't have much of a reserve compared to an older dog. The only way to treat Giardia is with antibiotics. Today, Dr. Forrest is back to see if the medication has taken effect. All right, come, sit up. Good girl. We're going to swap your bum, okay? Okay, it is his Riesling. Come, Moscato, your turn. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. We've got a fecal butt swaps. Now, we're going to test Moscato and Riesling for Giardia. So this is a bit like your COVID test kit. So if you see one line, it is negative. If you see two lines, it's positive. Four-month-old Moscato and Riesling need to be cleared of this condition before they can complete their core vaccinations. These are vaccinations given according to NPARC's guidelines. Vaccinations prevent diseases that puppies spread to each other. And they go on walks and stuff. Yeah, huh? Rats yeah. can have peed anywhere on the grass. Right. And then if they step on a pee and they lick themselves, they can get kidney failure from leptospirosis. Oh, Parvovirus is another very big one, causes bloody diarrhea. Okay. Um, and puppies are more susceptible. Oh. So these are the big stuff we're going to protect them right. against. The vaccines require three doses to be effective, with each dose given every three to four weeks. Moscato and Riesling have already completed two jabs. And today is the deadline for their final dose. Any delay will mean restarting this process. So I wanted Moscato and Riesling uh, vaccinated so they can go out of the house to experience the world. All right, Moscato and Riesling have completely cleared Giardia and I'm really happy that they're able to receive their final puppy vaccination today. 
Mas Kato, come sit. Hi, we're going to give you a vaccine now. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's give him some treats. Ready? Go. Well done. Hi, Riesling. What do we have here, sweet girl? You're going to get your vaccine. Would you like one? Okay, give it to her now. We're going to vaccinate her. Well done. Yay! Good girl. Didn't even realise you got vaccinated. Well done. At Star's Vet, Cookie the Beagle is under observation after being treated for chewing an alkaline battery. Meanwhile, another emergency is rushed in for Dr. Jean. A seven-year-old chihuahua, also called Cookie, has come in with breathing difficulties. You can feel that this dog is having a lot of uh, this kind of sound, like a respiratory difficulty noise. But this patient has a history of tracheal issues uh, before, so I would like to double check on the windpipe, but we're just not stable now. I just need to be on oxygen first. The very first thing from an emergency point of view is that is the patient stable? And if not, how are we going to stabilise the patient? The underlying problem may require surgery, but not always must it be done immediately. She's been having this condition for a couple of years now, uh, but it's never been so bad. Well, she was just coughing the whole night and uh, until this morning as well, so uh, we brought her in. Right now, we are suspicious of either laryngeal issues or tracheal collapse. Uh, both of them make the sound that Cookie is making now. Uh, it's a sort of a snorting, snoring noise. At this stage right now, she is critical. Her tongue is bluish, which means that her oxygen level is very low. Uh, we need to try to get her to have as much oxygen as possible in her lungs right now. It doesn't look very good for this kiddo because we seem to be needing the tube to breathe. Doctor just told me that it's touch and go now. I'm feeling very upset. Just hope that uh, she'll pull through. At Star's Vet, Cookie the Chihuahua situation is dire. Dr. Jean suspects that the dog's windpipe, or trachea, has collapsed, resulting in breathlessness. Well, we are mildly sedated, we are also going to quickly take away x-rays. I just really want to see that windpipe and the lungs. But just as Cookie is done with her x-ray, her breathing stops. So she does have tracheal collapse. Uh, we need to reduce the inflammation there as much as possible. The trachea is our breathing tube. In some dogs, unfortunately, it is not strong enough. And uh, when there's high pressures of air going back and forth, it can suck close, much like how if you're sucking a straw very, very hard. If the breathing tube is uh, sucked close, there's a lot of inflammation in the area, and air cannot go from the outside world into the lungs, and the patient cannot breathe. There's not enough oxygen for the body. This is absolutely critical. She's definitely in a life-threatening stage. Right now, we need to keep her on oxygen as much as possible and wait for the inflammation to come down. Okay, then, okay, relax, relax. relax. So we just need to keep on oxygen as much as possible. Okay. Uh, it is really touch and go. Um, I have to get you guys prepared because, to be honest, this one is quite severe. Mm. Uh, because the windpipe being so collapsed, I mean, we're trying to stabilise her, but if she collapses again, uh, there might be a chance that if it really is essentially the heart doesn't come back down. So let's breathe in the oxygen, okay? Breathe, darling. So I think it's good for you guys to spend some time. Just touch wood in case anything happens on the Cookie will be closely monitored. She has to be out of critical condition before a specialist can operate and repair her collapsed trachea. Vets do whatever they can for the pets, but there is also a certain limit that we cannot predict, we cannot force the outcome. Go, 
that part of the mental stress also adds on to being a vet. Close to midnight, Cookie the Chihuahua's heart stops beating. Resuscitation-wise, uh, we do know that in the first 20 minutes, we can't get a heartbeat back. Uh, the chances of getting a heartbeat back from then on is not very high at all. For Cookie's case, we had done for 25 minutes, went through five rounds of adrenaline. The biggest thing about emergency cases is that they contain a very high risk and as much as we try to save them, sometimes it really does not go the way that we want and to see the grief on the family, it really is very sad. Most owners know how painful it is to lose a pet. You can try to prepare yourself even though you can see the end coming but you can never really prepare when, once it happens. I have to be able to compartmentalise because the next emergency is waiting or the next consultation is waiting. By the end of the day, we usually do take stock at what has happened, um, is there anything we could have done differently, um, and basically just do a little bit of uh, reflection thinking on, about it. Hi, Kiki. Can I go home, right? Don't want any hot eating, sir. Like she's sniffing everything. <laughs> No, that's not your food, huh? That's how you get in trouble in the first place, huh? Happy, grateful that it went well, no complications. In the next episode of At the Vets, Yuki goes through a life saving surgery. I keep having this thought like, what if uh, she doesn't make it on the surgery table? Wait, wait, just give oxygen first. Bao Bao is rushed into the emergency room. She's suddenly very weak. She is not eating, she's not able to walk. And a final goodbye at home for Sushi. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing is to check whether he's still alive. 